One of the common questions we've been getting from our students lately is what's the difference between Docker and Containerd? You see, we used to see Docker everywhere when we learned Kubernetes before, but it's now all replaced with Containerd. So what's the story there and what, what happened? And in this video, we're going to walk you through the history behind Kubernetes and Docker and Containerd and some of the common CLI tools that you will come across such as Cry Control, Nerd Control, etc. My name is Mumshad Monambeth, and before we begin this video, I want to remind you to subscribe to our channel as we release new educational videos every week. So you're going to come across Docker and Container D many times um, going forward. So when you read older blogs or documentation pages, you'll see Docker mentioned along with Kubernetes, and when you read newer blogs, you will see Containerd, and you'll wonder what the difference is between the two. And there are a few CLI tools like uh, CTR, uh, Cry Control, or Node Control, and uh, you'll wonder what are these CLI tools and, and which one should you be using. So that's what I'm going to explain uh, in this video. So let's go back in time to the beginning of the container era, and in the beginning, there was just Docker, and there were other tools like Rocket, but Docker's user experience made working with containers super simple and hence Docker became the most dominant container tool. And then came Kubernetes to orchestrate Docker. So Kubernetes was built to orchestrate Docker specifically in the beginning. So Docker and Kubernetes were tightly coupled and back then Kubernetes only worked with uh, Docker and didn't support any other container solutions. And then Kubernetes grew in popularity as a container orchestrator. And now other container runtimes like Rocket uh, wanted in. So Kubernetes users needed it to work with container runtimes that are other than just Docker. And so Kubernetes introduced an interface called Container Runtime Interface or CRI. So CRI allowed any vendor to work as a container runtime for Kubernetes as long as they adhere to the OCI standards. So OCI stands for Open Container Initiative and it consists of an image spec and a runtime spec. Image spec means the specifications on how uh, an image should be built. So that's what it defined. An image spec defined the specifications on how an image should be built. And uh, the runtime spec defined the standards on how any container runtime should be developed. So keeping these standards in mind, anyone can build a container runtime uh, that can be used uh, by anybody to, to work with Kubernetes. So that was the idea. So Rocket and other container runtimes that adhere to the OCI standards were now supported as container runtimes for Kubernetes via the CRI. However, uh, Docker wasn't built to support the CRI standards. Because remember, Docker was built way before CRI was introduced and Docker still was the dominant container tool used by most. So Kubernetes had to continue to support Docker as well. And so Kubernetes introduced what is known as uh, Docker Shim, which was a hacky uh, but temporary way to continue to support Docker outside of the container uh, runtime interface. So while most other container runtimes worked through the CRI, Docker continued to work without it. So um, now you see Docker isn't just a container runtime alone. Docker consists of multiple tools that are put together. For example, the Docker CLI, the Docker API, the build tools that help in building images. There was support for volumes, auth, uh, security, and finally, also the container runtime called RunC and, and the daemon that managed RunC and that's, uh, that was called as container D. So container D is CRI compatible and can work directly with Kubernetes as all other runtimes. So container D can be used as a runtime on its own, separate from Docker. So now you have container D as a separate runtime and Docker uh, separately. So Kubernetes continued to maintain support for Docker engine directly. However, having to maintain the Docker shim was an unnecessary effort and added complications. So it was decided in version 1.24 uh, release of Kubernetes to remove Docker shim completely and so support for Docker was removed. But you see all the images that were built uh, before Docker was removed, so all the Docker uh, images uh, continue to work because uh, Docker followed the image spec uh, from the OCI standard, so all the images built by Docker 
follow the standard. So they continue to work with Containerd, but Docker itself uh, was removed as a supported uh, runtime uh, from Kubernetes. So that's kind of the whole story. And now let's look into Containerd uh, more specifically. So Containerd, although it's part of Docker, is a separate project on its own now and is a member of CNCF uh, with the graduated uh, status. So you can now install Containerd on its own without having to install Docker itself. So if you don't really need Docker's other features, you could ideally just install Containerd uh, alone. So typically we ran containers uh, using the Docker run command uh, when, we, when we had Docker. And if Docker isn't installed, then how do you run containers with just uh, Containerd? Now, once you install Containerd, it comes with a command line tool called CTR. And this tool is solely made for debugging Containerd and is not very user friendly as it only supports a limited set of features. Um, and this is what you can see in the documentation pages for, for this particular tool. So for the other than the limited set of features that it provides, anything, any other way that you want to interact with Containerd, you'll have to rely on making API calls directly, which is not the, uh, the most user friendly way for us to operate. So just to give you an idea, this can be the CTR command can be used to perform basic container related activities such as pull images. For example, to pull a uh, Redis image, you would run the CTR images pull command followed by the address of the image. And to run a container, um, we use the CTR run command and specify uh, the image address. But as I mentioned, this tool is solely made for debugging Containerd and is not very user friendly and not to be used for running or managing containers on, on a production um, environment. So a better alternative recommended is the nerd control tool or nerd CTL tool. So the nerd control tool is a command line tool that's very similar to Docker. So it's like a Docker-like CLI for Containerd. It kind of supports all or most of the options that Docker supports. And apart from that, it has the added benefit that it can give us access to the newest uh, features implemented into Containerd. So for example, we can work with the encrypted container images or other new feature that will eventually be implemented into the regular Docker commands in the future. It also supports lazy pulling of images, P2P image distribution, image signing and verifying and namespaces in Kubernetes, which is not available uh, in, in Docker. So the nerd control tool works very similar to Docker CLI. So in, instead of Docker, you would ideally simply have to replace it with nerd control. So you can run almost all Docker commands that interact with containers uh, like this. So uh, some examples are instead of running the Docker run command to create a container, to run a container, you could just uh, use the nerd control run command. And similarly, uh, let's say you want to use some options for port mappings or exposing ports uh, with the dash P option uh, for the Docker run command. You could do the same with nerd control, simply replace Docker with nerd control. So, so that's pretty easy and straightforward. So now that we have talked about CTR and the nerd control tool, uh, it's important to talk about another command line utility known as CRI CTL or CRI control. So earlier we talked about the container runtime interface or CRI, which is a single interface used to connect CRI compatible container runtimes, the like container D, Rocket and others. So uh, the CRI control is a command line utility that is used to interact with the CRI compatible uh, container runtime. So this is kind of an interaction from the Kubernetes perspective. So this this tool is kind of maintained by, uh, developed and maintained by the Kubernetes community. And this is uh, this tool works across all the different container runtimes. Um, as opposed to earlier, you had the CTR and the nerd control tool that were built by the Containerd community, specifically for Containerd. Um, this particular tool is from the Kubernetes perspective that works across different uh, container runtimes. So it must be installed separately and it is used to inspect and debug container runtime. So this again is not ideally used to create uh, containers unlike Docker or the node control uh, utility. This is again a debugging tool. You can technically create containers with the cry control uh, utility, but it's not easy. It's only to be used for some special debugging purposes. And the remember that uh, it kind of works along with the kubelet. So we know that a cube, the kubelet is responsible for ensuring that the specific number of containers or pods are available on uh, on node at a time. So if you kind of go through the cry control uh, utility and try and create containers with it, then eventually Kubelet is going to delete them because the, uh, Kubelet is unaware of uh, some of those containers or pods that are created outside of its knowledge. So anything that it sees, it's going to go and delete it. So because of those things, so remember that the cry control 
utility is only used for debugging purposes and getting into containers and all of that. So let's look at some of the command line examples. So you simply run the write control CRI CTL command for this. And this can be used to perform basic container related activities such as pull images uh, or list existing images, list containers, very similar to the Docker command where you use the PS command. So uh, in Docker, you would run the PS command here, you would run the uh, cry control PS command. And to, to run a command inside a container, in Docker, remember we use the exact command and it's the same here, um, along with the same options such as the dash I and dash T, uh, and then you specify the container uh, ID and then uh, the command that needs to be run. To view the logs, uh, again, you use the cry control logs command, very similar to Docker command. And uh, one major difference is that the cry control command is also aware of pods. So you can list pods by running the cry control pods command. So this wasn't something that Docker um, was aware of. So while working with Kubernetes in the past, uh, we used Docker commands a lot to troubleshoot containers and view logs, especially on the worker nodes. Uh, now you're going to use the cry control command to do so. So the syntax is a lot similar. Uh, so it shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be really hard. So here's a chart that lists the comparison between Docker and uh, the cry control uh, command line tool. So as you can see, a lot of commands such as attach, exec, uh, images, info, inspect, logs, ps, stats, version, etc., work exactly the same way. And some of the commands to create, remove, and start and stop images work similarly too. So a full list of differences can be found in the, the link um, given below. So um, since, as I mentioned, cry control can be used to connect to any CRA compatible runtime, remember to set the right endpoint if you have multiple container runtimes configured. Or if you want cry control to interact with a specific runtime, so for example, if you haven't configured anything, by default is going to connect to these uh, sockets in this particular order. So it's going to try and connect to Docker shim first, and then container D, and then cryo, and then you have the cry uh, docker d, that's, that's kind of the order that it follows. But if you want to override that and set a specific uh, endpoint, you use the um, uh, runtime endpoint option with the cry control command line, or you could uh, use the container runtime endpoint environment variable, set the environment variable to the, to the right uh, endpoint. So to summarize, we have the CTR command line utility that comes with container d and works with container d which is used for debugging purposes only and has a very limit, limited set of features. So ideally you wouldn't be using this at all. So you can kind of ignore this. Then we have the nerd control CLI, which is again from the container D community, but this is a Docker like CLI for container D used for general purpose to create containers and supports the same or more features um, than Docker CLI. So there's something that I think we'll be using a lot more going forward. And then we have the um, cry control utility, which is uh, from the Kubernetes community. The, uh, mainly used to interact with CRI compatible runtime. So it's not just for container D, this can be used for all CRI supported uh, runtimes. Again, this is mainly for to be used for debugging purposes. So if you look at the comparisons here, you can see that CTR and cry control are used mainly for debugging purposes, whereas the nerd control is used for general purpose. The CTR and nerd control uh, are from the container D community and works with container D whereas uh, cry control is from the Kubernetes community and works across all CRA compatible runtimes. So our labs originally had Docker installed on all the nodes, so we used the Docker commands to troubleshoot, but now it's all container D, so remember to use the, um, the cry control command instead to troubleshoot. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked our content, do like and share in your community, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we release new videos every week.